Okay, abbreviations. Now, abbreviations are very troublesome, and in general, you want to avoid them as much as possible. Especially common abbreviations in English, like I was saying, don't, didn't, won't, can't. Don't write those. Write the word out. But in science, we have many abbreviations we use to make our reading e a little bit smoother, a little bit easier. But still, do be careful not to overdo it. Now, the general rule is that when you have an abbreviation the first time in your paper, at that moment, you're going to write the whole thing out, and then you're going to give the abbreviation inside of a parentheses. Then, after that first time, you always use the abbreviation. But never at the start of a sentence. So there's an important rule here. First, the first time you use the abbreviation, you must explain what is it so that the reader knows. Then, after the first time, you can go ahead and continue using the abbreviation, but not at the beginning of a sentence. And if you need to begin a sentence with this abbreviation, you need to write it out totally every word and not use the abbreviation. Here's an example. The results of studies of simple, re a simple reaction time. So here we have RT. What does RT mean? Reaction time. To a visual target have shown a strong negative relation between RT and luminance. So here we have the first time in my paper, the first time I've used reaction time. And what do I do? I write the whole thing out. Then inside the parentheses, I give you the abbreviation. Then, every time later, I use the abbreviation. Unless. Unless what? Unless it's at the beginning of a sentence. So if I write another sentence and the sentence begins with reaction time, can I begin my sentence this way? Reaction time has shown something, something, blah, blah, blah. Can I do that? No. I cannot do that. I would have to write out reaction time, the whole two words. Do not explain abbreviations that are in the dictionary. This is a, a, an interesting kind of a rule of thumb that is a little bit confusing. But what we're saying is there are many abbreviations in science and in your area that are very, very common. You don't need to explain those and then use parentheses. You can just use them. So for example, IQ. If you're writing a paper and you use IQ, you do not need to the first time say intellect, intellect quotient. Yeah. Quotient, quotient, isn't that what it is? You don't need to write that the first time. REM, rapid eye movement, you don't need to write that. The ESP, extrasensory perception, but you don't need to do that. Just use the abbreviation without explaining it because they're in the dictionary. So it's just like a word. Explain abbreviations that are not in the dictionary, even if it's common in your field. Now, this I think you need to take with a grain of salt. You need to think about it for a minute, and you need to ask your professor, and I think you need to look at other papers that are published in your area or other reports or other books and see what do they do. And if it's really very, very common, and it's so common in the field that everyone knows it, you may not have to explain it. You can just use the abbreviation. But the rule of thumb for the APA is even if it's common, you go ahead and you explain it the first time if it's not in a dictionary. So for example, Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, or MMPI. This is the first time it is in the paper. This is very common. Everybody in the field of psychology knows this. But anyway, the first time you explain it. Again, though, it depends on your journal. Follow the rules you're targeting. Here's another example. Conditional stimulus, CS, intertrial interval, ITI, constant vowel constant, CVC, short term memory, STM. So all of these are really common, very, very normal. But anyway, explain them the first time. Reaction time, RT, and so on. Do not abbreviate the words subject, experimenter, and observer. They're very common. It would be easy because you use these words a lot. 
it'd be easy to think, hey, I should abbreviate these. And the answer is, uh, no, you shouldn't abbreviate these. Stay away from abbreviating them. Write them out. Use standard Latin abbreviations only in parenthetical material that is inside a parenthesis. So that is saying only when you're going to put it inside the parentheses. So a parentheses, here are some examples, right? E.G., which means for example, I.E., which means that is, C.F., which means compare, uh, E.T.C., which means uh, etc., and so forth, uh, V.S., versus. So you only use these inside the parentheses, not outside the parentheses. Now again, be careful. It depends on your professor and your journal and the rules you're following for your publication. Because you can, I have seen them use outside the parentheses occasionally. One thing I would mention, however, to keep in mind is if you use something like the EG, EG, no space, which means, for example, you could use this inside the parentheses like this, E, G, and then you write something, blah, blah, blah. Another way you could is you could use it inside of a sentence, but you need to have a comma after it and a comma before, and then you need to have one space before the E. And one space after the comma. Now again, the APA says you probably should not be doing this. You should only be doing it inside the parentheses. You should never do it on its own. However, again, it depends on the journal and what you've been told to do. If you do use it outside the parentheses, though, you do need to remember comma before, comma after. Abbreviations for measurement can be a little bit troublesome sometimes. So we have things like CM, uh, centimeters, S for seconds, MIN for minutes, HR for hours, and the degree sign for degrees. So for these measurements, you would use the abbreviations no matter what, and you don't need to explain them. You don't need to repeat when you're using uh, numbers that are grouped together. For example, 16 to 30 kilohertz, you do not need to write 16 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz. You can just write 16 to 30 like this or the other example next to it, which is the 0 0.3, 1.5, and 3.0 milligrams per dexaliter. So in this case, you do not need to write the MGDL, MGDL. You just go ahead and write it on the last one only. That's good. Write out units that do not have values. So for example, if you're going to write centimeters or kilograms or kilometers or seconds or kilohertz, if there's no number, if there's no number, then you must write out the whole word. Now here we have a number four, so we write CM. Here we have no number, so we write centimeters. Getting confused yet with all these rules of what to abbreviate and what not to abbreviate? Well, there's a couple more. So let's move on to do not abbreviate these. Day, week, month, and year. Even though you abbreviate things like minutes and seconds, but day, week, month, year, you don't abbreviate. Go figure. You can abbreviate these units of time, however. Hour, HR, minute, MIN, Millisecond, MS, nanosecond, NS, and S for second. Please, don't ask me why. Uh, it's just the rule the APA has. I think the main reason is to avoid confusion, but just learning it confuses me. Here are some more abbreviations, such as in chemicals. Avoid chemical formulas, such as these. Aspirin or silic acid, not c 9 h 8 Zero 04, is that 04? It must be 04, right? So in other words, avoid the formula. This is not good, but this is good, and this is good. And actually, I guess aspirin would be the best good, the better one, because it's straightforward and easy for anyone to understand. If you're using Greek letters, then you need to keep those Greek letters inside the text. So here, beta carotene, instead of writing out the word beta. Carotene. Use the symbol beta, the Greek symbol. 
For plurals, you need to add an S. So for example, if you have the abbreviation IQ and you want to make it plural, you say IQs. Please pay attention there, no space before, right? There's no space there, there's no apostrophe there. It just says IQs, E-D-S, volumes, V-O-L-S. Okay. However, not for measurements. So for example, 12 centimeters, that is plural, that is more than one. Should we add an S here, 12 centimeters? And the answer is no, no S there. 15 inches, should we add an S there? No, no S there. And gigabytes, should we add an S? No, no S there. Again, rules that are confusing, overwhelming sometimes, but this is just part of your formal research writing. So pay attention to that. And again, the best way is to pay attention when you're reading or to go check articles that are in the journal you're targeting. Now, I've mentioned this already. Do not begin a sentence with an abbreviation. I just want to emphasize it one more time. And let me just say it really, really clear. When you begin a sentence, the first word in that sentence cannot ever be an abbreviation. I know it's hard to understand why, and it doesn't really matter why, it's just that this is a rule. It makes it really hard to read if you have these abbreviations at the beginning. So what if you need to put the word at the beginning? You just write out the whole word. What if you don't want to write out the whole word? You only want to write the abbreviation because it's maybe MMLT, something very long. You don't want to write so much then you can change your sentence so that the first word is a different word. And then you can have this abbreviation. So, for example, I could just maybe begin the sentence with a therefore, comma, or next, comma, a kind of introductory word, or an introductory phrase would be helpful, and a comma. Then you could put your abbreviation in, no problem. So, please keep that in mind. I think it's a hard one to remember because when you're typing, you get going and you just forget. Okay, here is a list of abbreviations, and you can see that they have some that, you know, very common, AM, PM, these kinds of things. But then there are numerous ones that maybe you're not familiar with. Of course, your field of study may have many special symbols. Please double check, make sure. Okay, that is all for the capitalizations, the spelling, the hyphen and the dashes, and the abbreviations. A lot of really small details, but I think some of the general ideas, please remember. And for the detail, the key point is check. Check, check, check. Check what the rules are, check what others have done. Probably the one thing you don't wanna do is just Google it, or just look it up on the internet. Because if you just Google it, you just say, well, I have an abbreviation, let me see how somebody used it. I can guarantee you, I can promise you that the person you find has done it wrong. Just because other people do it wrong doesn't mean it's right for you to copy. So when I say check examples, I don't mean check any examples. What I mean is check the good examples. And that would mainly be the publications, the ones that are already published, the journals that are published, the articles inside the journals. You need to download them and check them in detail. And sometimes I like to have maybe, a, let's say I'm trying to target a journal, so I'm trying to send to the Journal of Retailing. And that journal has on its website some articles that they use as example articles. And I take that, I print it out, and I keep it right next to me. And whenever I have a question, I go ahead and look through that paper and see what they've done on that example one. Even that, however, doesn't mean that there's not mistakes. Please remember that a journal, a book, these days when they're published, there's probably not many people checking it carefully for not having mistakes. Avoiding mistakes is up to you. And this is one reason there's so many mistakes, because people just willy-nilly do whatever they want and they don't really think about it and they think it's okay. And then they put it on the internet and it gets on there or they send it to a journal and it gets through because the journal doesn't have people to be checking that. 
So please keep that in mind. I had a friend of mine who used to check their spelling, spelling words, by doing what? Googling them. They just, hmm, how do you spell this word? They Google it. Well, when you Google a word, I can guarantee you, if you spell it wrong, you will find somebody else who spelled it wrong. So, how do you solve that? Get the Webster's Dictionary app, put it on your iPhone, put it on your Android phone. You can even talk to it, which is great, because if you don't know how to spell a word, how do you find a word you don't know how to spell? One great way is you can talk to the voice activation, to the voice recognition, and then the Webster's Dictionary app will look it up for you. I love that feature. That's really handy. So check, double check, and make sure. Next, we're going to look at a bunch of examples, which is another way to help us kind of get it inside of our brain.